Okay, I'm a glass blower, and I want to tell you about glass because glass is an alchemic blend of sand and metallic oxides combined with extraordinary blinding heat. It possesses an inner light and transcendent radiant heat that make it simultaneously one of the most fascinating materials for an artist to work with. It flows and drips like honey when it's hot. And when it's hot, glass is alive, it possesses an inner light. And it is one of the most challenging and frustrating and amazingly difficult materials for an artist to work with. I moved to this farm in Western Massachusetts, about two hours west of here, in 1976. And long before I installed solar panels, one of the local school teachers stopped by and asked me if I'd be willing to demonstrate glass making. And somehow I got roped into showing glass blowing to all the eighth graders in, in the county. So I had about 80 kids every Wednesday afternoon for weeks and weeks and weeks. And during that time, I discovered that kids were not the slightest bit interested in me making vases or bowls or bottles or paperweights, but they were interested when I started making marbles for them. And one night I was thinking about this iconic photograph that, uh, that was taken by the Apollo astronauts on their way back from the moon on, on Apollo 8. And the next day, instead of making marbles for these kids, I decided to make planets to give those kids something to think about that our Earth, which seems so vast and limitless, is actually really just as small as a little blue marble floating in the black void of space. And those making planets suddenly gave me a reason to learn every conceivable glass making technique to put inside these little spheres. And it also started and piqued my interest in, in astronomy and astrophysics and cosmology. And that's really how it's all started back uh, 45, 46 years ago. So I get to pack the inside of these things with an amazing amount of detail. And what I've discovered along the way is that these little planets, some of them are quite small, some of them are much larger, but everybody gets it. They're a very simple sphere, but they're interesting to everybody. They, they seem to transcend gender and, and ethnicity and age and religion and everything. Everybody gets it. All primates seem to enjoy them. <laughs> so. John, you and I were going to talk for a while. I can also show you some slides of how I make these. Yeah. So, these. so I just I want to ask you. So, how do you feel about this becoming the symbol of this gathering? This is it's it's so wonderful and amazing to uh, to be part of this. That that pieces that I make for my own personal reason to pack them with as much information and make them something that you can explore and be curious about are aspirational, they become something that you can think about the future or think about what our planet might become, hopefully not exactly like all of these, but. And, and are no two alike, like each? Actually, every single one is different. Every single yeah. one that I've made, and I've selected each one for each of the speakers. Yeah. And, and then I know you etched planetary stewardship on the bottom. Did you personally do that, or you had a machine do it? <laughs> no, it's my handwriting. Oh, really? Yeah, with, oh, well, with a dental drill. Okay, awesome. So they're personally signed. And then the st stuff inside them, what, what is that? Did you go to like uh, Walmart and uh, Target and all, just get all, some items? All of the pieces. Are they in, symbolic of anything? They are symbolic of whatever's in our mind to, to, to see them. That is, it's amazing. They can be something that's micro or macro at the same time. So you can look at one of these pieces and see things, walled cities or constructions or continents or, or, or geosynchronous communication satellites in orbit. All of it is in your mind. I believe it's what you guys see that's what's important. So I've been telling people that when you get an Oscar for makeup or, science or uh, special effects, you know, you put it on your mantle and it's a point of pride. What I want people to do when they get these is to think about how much more do I need to do to make my actionable idea happen? C can you riff off that concept and how, how you see your art helping to facilitate that uh, message? You know. Actually, from a personal standpoint, I've spent my life, propane gas is what I burn, but I use one third the amount of propane that I used 10 years ago. And when we put in solar panels, it actually, I thought it was gonna be this huge um, expense, but in fact, it's caused unseen things that have happened. 
some of the pieces that are made inside of my pe- inside of my planets were formed because I have almost unlimited electric power. I'm making twice the power that my whole studio and my home use now, and and hopefully we, we there are unseen effects, unseen things that happen with what all that what you guys are doing, what we're all doing to try to make the world a better place. So. Um, you got four minutes. Go through your last few slides. I was just going to show more you. Than four minutes. I'm not even going to use four minutes. I'm going to just show you. Um, my wife Katie is a uh, uh, now retired astronaut, and she took some of my planets up with her. <laughs> now, mind mind you, you're permitted as as a, an astronaut, you're permitted to bring a small sandwich bag of personal things. I wanted her to take our riding lawnmower from. But uh, Na- NASA wouldn't have it. And, uh, but there might be planets floating in orbit around the, our world right now. So thank you very much. Oh,